Hi everybody, this is a repair for this Iowa AD F850U and um, I got this cassette deck for free actually. A gentleman online was uh, just giving away a few components because they were broken and this was one of them. Um, this is actually a really nice tape deck. It, if I get this to run it'll be one of my better decks that I've come across. Um, I think it's got, yeah, it's three head, dual caption motor, it's got Dolby B and C. So, I mean, it's made by Iowa, and I don't know much about the brand. I had like an Iowa all-in-one system growing up, <laughs> and it was like pretty garbage, but, um, you know, some stuff they make, I guess, is okay, uh, as proven true here. So this is their tape deck. I don't know the year, but I can put a bunch of uh, specs in the description. Now, <clears throat> this deck is very special because when I first opened this up, I have never, I mean, I've been doing repairs for quite a while. I've never seen a more deteriorated belt than I had on this cassette deck assembly right here. I'm going to assume it was a actual rubber belt or one of those weird synthetic polymer belt. I don't really know what kind of rubber it was. If you guys know which one really deteriorates bad, let me know because I'd like to, I'd like to remember uh, just, I mean, it, this entire assembly, right, it looked like a normal belt wear. Like, there was, you know, just all black. Uh, you could see the, the belt was, you know, melted, no problem. I would go to pick it off with my fingernail, like I always do, and it's just like a piece of, of like, uh, uh, almost tar. It's the only way I could describe it. It was like black tar, I'm serious. And just trying to take it off, and it, and it just left this residue on my finger and on my thumb right here. That was the darkest black I had ever seen. It was like vente black. It was completely, utterly dark and like metallic. I could not believe how stubborn this stuff was to get off my hands. I tried like six different soaps. I tried Dove. I tried a Gojo hand cleaner. I tried just running it under warm water. Nothing took this stuff off. I had to shower to get this off. I guess like the hot water in the shower and just constant scrubbing. Finally, it, it, it took it down to like a lighter darker uh, lighter black right and I was like cool with that that's how stubborn this stuff was to my skin so the next day when I was trying to get the rest off of it I decided to just use a pair of tweezers and get all that out anyway I mean th this was gnarly I mean this stuff was it was just I, I I'm only saying this because I want you to if you're gonna attempt one of these it's not that bad just don't touch it <laughs> just don't touch it with your bare hands wear gloves or something and and uh, luckily, when you remove these three three screws, it's actually like this. When you remove these three screws, uh, hold on, I fucking. Uh, sorry, the uh, radio was starting to talk in politics. <laughs> okay, um, so you can actually remove this assembly piece right here, and there will be residue all around here. What I recommend to you re to remove as much gunk as you can. Just get some cotton swabs and isopropyl alcohol I have right here. 70% or higher will do. And just douse it and remove it. Douse it, remove it. Uh, I never had to work harder to remove anything from a cassette deck before, more than this one. So once again, just proceed with caution. It's totally doable, just it takes a while. So putting the belt back on is super easy. There was a guy on eBay selling a two-pack of these for a ridiculous price. I mean... I don't know what it is, but I feel like belts are getting more expensive. Is it just me? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like belts always were like eight bucks. And then now all of a sudden people are just making them ridiculously expensive. Here I'm laying it down. So just normally it's three inches and taut. Let's see. So if you just bought like a belt pack, you know, you wouldn't have to shell out just a ridiculous price. Yeah, it looks in, looking about three and a half inches. Here is... Uh, this piece that comes out when I got all the uh, belt residue off, I took some hops number nine or like three in one oil and I put a little bit on this inner shaft here and put it through and just ran the, uh, the oil to get it all in um, and it'll spin a lot smoother. At least for me it did because these were actually a little slow. Now you can see they spin pretty freely and I thought that was really cool that they came out. So I don't know if that's typical of higher end uh, cassette decks but I thought it was awesome. And be careful because there's a little spring that will come out and there's a little uh, like washer here. It's a rubber washer that will also come out. To install the belt back. And um, the way that I'm gonna do that 
Let's first put this piece, this belt, in the inner. Put that like this. Put this piece in. I'm trying to be gentle here. I don't want to break this belt. Spin that and make sure that's straight. It looks good to me. Okay. Uh, the next piece will go on the outer piece, the outer uh, spindle here. That looks good. And then I'll put this uh, bracket back on. Just like that. Now I remember this extremely long screw uh, was on the right side, so I'll put all the others in first. The last part is the hardest part, of course, is this belt on this pulley has to go on that side of the motor right here. See it? Right in there. <laughs> Easier said than done, of course. I think depending on the tool that you have at your disposal will kind of dictate how easy or hard this job will be. Look, these are the tweezers that I was using and now all my hands are covered in this black goop again, so I feel like I shouldn't use that. Um, I have another pair right here. Okay. So I don't want to be in, I don't want to be blocking the frame, but i um, just going to attempt to throw that belt over. Now that's in. I'm going to just slowly bring this piece like that and center it on this. All right. Everything's spinning. So if that wasn't clear what I did, I just uh, grabbed the belt here, put it in my fingers. I was able to grab it and pull it from the other side and wrap it around. Um, yeah, actually wasn't too bad. So hope that's all that was wrong with this uh, Iowa tape deck, so I'll plug it in. Grab a cassette tape, I'll zoom out now. Grab a cassette tape, uh, if I have one in here. Yes, I do. Alright, this looks like some Tom Leher, Leher, Lear songs? I don't know. Alright, turn it on. Alright, so it's making all kinds of noise. Oh, I already have a tape in there. I'll just use this anyway. Alright, press play. And nothing. So let's see. Motor spinning. Belts are all spinning. Oh, there it goes. Maybe it just had to uh, get in sync. But here it goes, it's working playing all right let's plug this thing into an amplifier and uh see who tom leher or Lair <laughs> see who that is all right there's the tape deck it's working perfectly uh both left and right channels i don't hear any discrepancy in uh volume bias control here you have your record sensitivity record balance left and right mpx filtering on and off you can monitor the source when you're recording or the tape. It's got Dolby B and C with a flip of a switch. Record pause, record uh, mute. It's got, I think you can actually uh, find the next track. It'll do index searching, which is awesome. Right, you can reset the counter and you can mess with the display settings in case you are boring and like your, your cassette deck to look like that. Let's see, zero return and reset counter. Oh, I think this will actually, if you hit that, I, I think zero return will, will, will bring that back to zero, maybe for recording. Anyway, uh, I wanted to show something on the inside. Uh, and of course, you have your record level adjustment knob. I wanted to show something on the inside of the mechanism. So if I eject it, check this out. It's got AMTS, which stands for Anti-Modulation Tape Stabilizer, which is kind of interesting. I never saw that before. But essentially, it's like a suspension system for your tape, I think. Um, it's got like some play here, and every time I, I mess with the door, it moves. So I feel like it's kind of like a, 
it, it makes sure that the tape stays in place. And so it has like a little bit of a play and it's kind of on these like springs here on the inside. So that's kind of a neat feature. Um, but yeah, dual caps and motor. As you saw, really easy belt change. You were able to lubricate all the moving parts too, which is awesome. The mechanism was super easy to get to. Uh, the whole inner, uh, inside of the cassette deck is just very simple, easy to use. So yeah, if you guys know much about Iowa hi-fi components, let me know. I have only seen like lower end, you know, products from them. I've never seen a high end piece and this is actually a really nice cassette deck. So, uh, and here's this gentleman I was talking about. Oh wait, got to put a tape in there. So it knows if there's no tape, that's cool. This guy, he's like a comedy. Like he does like comedy. I gotta turn Dolby V off. It's like you can hear him play guitar and Try to tell jokes. Yeah, so <laughs> some random comedy thing. All right, anyway, yeah. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Like I said, this is an awesome little tape deck. Uh, if you can find belts for it cheaper, that'd be a lot better than what I did, but the belts did work. So, And then all we did was lubricate the inner mechanism with hops number nine. You could probably use a three-in-one oil or anything like that. Little bit of a cleaning i'll clean the heads as well with some uh, alcohol I'll clean the face up a little bit there's a stain there and some crap here but i'll get this all good to go and um one final piece about the tape deck is something that i never see is that it comes with a remote so you could be sitting across the room hit play Until the place is just and be like oh man i hate this joke fast forward it oh, i think you have to hold it how awesome is that you have to hold the fast forward and then when you let go it starts that's just awesome. This is a sweet tape deck. Oh, I hit the stop button. When you have a, uh, uh, the remote control with it, I think that really makes this a lot cooler. Um, oh, look, yeah, I hit the zero return, and it's counting down all the way to the zero. So, I mean, this is a slick tape deck. Hit play. There you go. I might put this in my main system. Uh, I want to hear how it really sounds, like, in a, in a better environment than just, like, a little uh, setup there for testing, but... I mean, this is a nice, this is a really nice mechanism. Dual caps and three head. It's awesome. All right, guys, careful with those belts. They're super sticky, but just wear gloves and use alcohol and take everything apart and wipe it down. You'll be good. Uh, I, did a, I did a good job. I wouldn't say I did like a phenomenal job cleaning it. I did like a good job. It wasn't sticky to the touch. I did it like one more time and it was cool. Like, I don't, I don't think you have to go crazy on cleaning this thing. And also the, st the speed was stable which is crazy. I have a uh, video of how to do how to adjust the speed on your tape deck. You can check that link in the video description. That was kind of like before I was doing uh, videos of repairs. So that was that was a cool that was a cool video. Um, maybe a year ago, I made that video. Um, once again, if you have any questions, please let me know and have a nice day. Thanks.